What would you do if the father figure you had learned to love and seek comfort from for many years turned out to be a deprived man who cunningly preyed on you the entire time? Devastation, trauma, and betrayal are feelings many of us would have to this revelation, and of course would want justice, likely through judicial means. But let me ask you this, would you ever consider seeking revenge in the form of murder? In Jade's case, the answer was yes, and throughout this process, her position as the sheep of the story soon became that of the wolf. Welcome or welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime, folks. My name is Adrian, and boy, do I have a conflicting case for you today. Today we'll be looking at the bizarre case of Jade Jenks, who went from being a victim of a very hideous crime, to the perpetrator of an even worse one. But before we begin, I just wanted to let you know that I post true crime and strange cases here weekly, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so, it really helps me out. And now, with that said, please grab yourself a coffee, buckle up, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Jade Jenks. Welcome to California, one of the most populous western states in the vast continent of North America. Characterized by its expansive deserts, rocky mountain peaks, and tantalizing beaches, you'd be hard done by to find somewhere without natural beauty here. California's outstanding wilderness will always remain close to my heart, but if you look past the flora and fauna to the urban life beyond, you will also come to realize that, thanks to its booming technology industry, it's one of the richest states in the country. Silicon Valley is a modern region in California home to some of the largest tech companies in the world, which includes the likes of Google, Facebook, Apple, and even Tesla. But maybe let's just ignore the current stock market for now. Now unfortunately, the technology economy in the state makes it one of the most expensive places to live in the US, especially areas such as Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, and our setting for today's case, San Diego. San Diego can best be described as bohemian. Known for its beaches, parks, and warm climate, it is also home to numerous art studios, galleries, and museums. A modern metropolis suited to many creative individuals. If, of course, you can afford it. Anyway, it's here in the northern area of Solana Beach that we meet the main subject of today's case, and her name is Jade Janks. Jade was an affluent interior designer in the city. Having started her own company in 2018, which was aptly named Jay Jank's Design, her rapid success led to a staggering net worth of around $15 million. On her LinkedIn profile, Jade describes herself as your personal design concierge, where she insists that she will be with you every step of the way to achieve your desired designs and outcome. Now, Jade is a very interesting woman, but as you can probably guess, she did not create this empire out of thin air. So we're going to wind the clocks back to where it all began. Being an 80s baby, Jade was born on the 14th of October 1983 to her mother Jenny and father Steve. To add to this, Steve owned a construction company which helped the family get by. Now, sadly, Jade's parents divorced when she was only 10 years old, but despite the separation, she still saw her father regularly while living with her mother. And with Jenny Jenks now single, she was once again on the market. And in the year 1995, when Jade was just 11 years old, she met a man named Tom Merriman. Their following marriage resulted in the birth of Jade's half-brother, Cash, and although they came from different fathers, the two had a very average and unremarkable sibling relationship. The family lived happily like this for a while. However, after another relatively short marriage of just a few years, Jenny once again divorced in 2002. Now, thankfully, once again, the family stayed quite close to each other, and Tom was never out of the picture. Moving into the young adult years, Cash went on to pursue psychology after graduating from high school, while Jade took inspiration from her father's business in construction, and this led to her finding a passion in the profession of interior design. After graduating from high school, Jade went on to study at San Diego's Mesa College, while simultaneously gaining practical experience by working for her father's company. In this time frame, Jade had everything going for her. She was young, beautiful, and ambitious, and at this point in her life, the world really was her oyster. Now outside of work, Jade loved to travel, and she aspired to indulge in the finer things in life. This included things like boat trips, designer clothing, expensive drinks, and fancy dinners out. And this lust for all things luxurious drove her to make several changes in her career, as every avenue taken was not getting her up the ladder quickly enough. From working for her father in 2001, she jumped into sales and management before becoming a project engineer for Gordon Prill. But, much like in the early days of my own career, Jade could not find her passion through these jobs. And eventually, the young woman knew she had to make the bold leap into interior design. 
Throughout this exploration, Jade's relationships with her family remained solid, and she kept close contact with her mother, father, and even stepfather Tom. Now, even after their divorce, Tom knew that he could never replace her biological father, but nevertheless, he loved Jade and supported her all the same. And over the decade of knowing each other, the role of support switched between Jade and Tom. Where he once cared for her as a child, she now cared for him as an elder. Unfortunately, the old man periodically struggled with alcoholism and an ongoing addiction to sleeping pills, both of which were issues that Jade often tried to quash. But the two cared for each other and supported each other greatly, and eventually, Jade moved into the house next door to Tom to help look after him. Throughout the following years, Jade's ambition helped her grow her professional life exponentially. She had finally struck out into the world of design with help from her father, who now managed his own tile production company. She worked her way through multiple jobs in the design industry, and after gaining several years of experience, she established her own interior design company titled Jade Janks Interiors. Meanwhile, Tom had his own success too. He opened up a non-profit butterfly farm in 2013, as the aging man wanted to bring something beautiful to the city of Solana Beach. Moving forward for the next 10 or so years, their lives were harmonious and rather uneventful, and most members of the family were happily flourishing, doing something they loved. But distressingly, all of this would suddenly change. And on New Year's Day of 2021, the family would receive some shocking news that would change their lives forever. It was an average New Year's Day for the Solana Beach Police Department. With their usual influx of drunken fights and other minor crimes after a night of hard partying, Officers did have their hands full, but all things considered, the day appeared to be a tame one. But things would take a distinctly morbid turn, and that all began when a man entered his local police station to report some very strange behaviour. The man's name was Adam Sipoliak, and he was a close friend of Jade Janks. It turns out that, at around noon on New Year's Eve, Jade had phoned Adam to request help in moving her stepfather upstairs. Now, at the time, Adam was quite busy, and he unfortunately had to decline. But to make up for the disappointment, he surprised her with a visit several hours later at around 7pm. However, it appeared to him that he'd walked into an unwelcome situation upon arriving, as when he got there, he noticed Tom's body slumped in the car. Concerned by the information provided, officers carried out a welfare check on Tom. But after pulling up to his house, they saw that the car was now empty. One other point to note, but they realised that the driveway had been littered with rubbish, but otherwise there was nothing else out of the ordinary. After knocking on the front door, the authorities were greeted with silence, and peering into the windows yielded nothing outstanding either, the house seemed clean and tidy. But upon walking back to their vehicles, officers noted something rather unusual about the pile of rubbish on the driveway, and upon further investigation, they realised that something large was lying underneath the cardboard and debris and that was something large with an eerily distinct shape. And that was when, right there, hidden below the trash pile, officers found the lifeless body of Tom Merriman. One of the most notable features was the blood that had pulled from and around his face, which indicated that he had been there for at least several hours. Now, Tom, he was certainly dead, but the reason or cause for his death was not known by officers, and this would not be known until several days later once toxicology reports returned. It was obvious that the debris covering his body was an attempt to hide him from anyone curious enough to look around, and so with that said, officers knew that this was not a simple accident. With thanks to Adam and the accusations he had laid before them, authorities had an immediate suspect in mind, and of course, that was no one other than Jade Janks. But Jade firmly denied any involvement in murdering her stepfather, as after all, she'd even moved next door to him to look after him. So why would she want him dead? Either way, the entire situation did not place her in a favourable light, and late that morning, officers arrested her on suspicion of murder. Tom's death was enough to bring shock and despair to all of those who knew him. None of this made sense to anyone. The pair had supported each other for decades, and Jade was one of the closest to him. So why she would be considered a suspect in his murder was totally baffling. It's worth noting that just one week before his death, Tom was in hospital after a particularly bad fall and those close to the family noted that Jade had been caring for him ever since. Now this included taking him to the hospital, collecting medication on his behalf, and making sure his house was still well maintained while away. However, little did anyone know that in the midst of his accident, Jade had come to a shocking discovery that chilled her to her core. One which made her feel violated, dirty, and horrifically confused. 
I think this applies for all of us, but whether it's hospital or holiday, no one likes to come back to a messy home. And Jade, of course, being the supposedly good person that she is, realised this. She wanted Tom to feel comfortable when he returned, so with that motivation in mind, she got to work cleaning the place. Now, while cleaning in the office and around his desk, Jade accidentally nudged the mouse to his computer. And upon doing this, his computer woke up and the screen illuminated. Well, here came her first cold surprise, because on inspection, she realised that his desktop background was an image of a woman's breasts. And concerningly, they looked familiar. Jade's blood ran cold, as after several seconds, she came to realise that she was staring at a picture of her own chest. But none of this made sense, as she had shared it with an ex-boyfriend several years ago, and how it made its way onto Tom's computer, she had no tangible idea. Upon further inspection, Jade found more than 100 photos of her body, where Tom had organised all of them into separate folders categorised by her body parts. And if that wasn't awful enough, she realised that some of these photos were dated more than 10 years prior, putting Jade at a nauseatingly young age of 16 years old. Now, many of these photos were shared with previous ex-boyfriends, all of which would have been stored on computers or phones that no longer existed. But there was another selection of photos which took things one chilling step further. It seems that dozens of photos were taken from a hidden camera in the bathroom and bedroom, of course all of which would have been without consent or knowledge. Now, let's be very clear here, Jade's discovery was absolutely horrific. To realise that a parental figure has been preying on you for so many years is beyond devastating. She had every reason to feel traumatised. Now, moving forward, there were a number of courses of actions that Jade could have taken. Most of us would turn to the authorities or deal with things internally within the family. However, I think you already know that this wasn't what Jade decided to do. In Jade's shoes, the path she took is one that many of us would only fantasise about. Now, Jade was already scheduled to pick him up from hospital after a sufficient recovery, which would likely be in a few days' time. And if she was able to compose and control herself until then, she could then confront him directly. So in short, her answer to all of this was murder. And since Tom already struggled with alcohol and medication abuse, she figured it would be easy to get away with it. All she had to do was make it look like an accident. But Jade made one grave mistake throughout her plans. As after Tom was released from the hospital, she made the foolish decision to involve other people in her actions. She sent dozens of text messages to her fixer, who was employed to cover up her tracks. And in these messages, she described her murderous actions in great detail, where she requested further help. Some of the messages sent included, I just dosed the hell out of him. Stopping for a whiskey, then at Dixieland to stall, let me know. He's waking up, I really don't want to be the one to do this. I'm about to club him on the head as he's waking up. I'm not strong enough, he is very aware now, and I'm on my own. Getting desperate, she followed up by messaging, I can't carry him alone, and I can't keep a kicking body in my trunk. After realising how serious Jade's actions were, her fixer bailed out at the last minute. In a panic, Jade then called Adam for support, who, eventually, of course, would be the one to turn her in. She told him that Tom had collapsed in her car after an indulgent cocktail of whiskey and sleeping pills, and that she needed help. As we already know, Adam then made his way over to Jade's house later that evening, and that is when he spotted Tom slumped in her car. But Jade couldn't stick to her story, and after telling him what she had found on Tom's computer, and why he had to die for his actions, she asked Adam to help her cover up her crimes. But Adam refused to be an accessory to murder, and after taking one last drag of his cigarette, he hugged Jade goodbye and left the property. Not knowing what to do, Jade drove Tom's lifeless body back home, which conveniently was just next door. She then dumped it in the front garden and covered it with rubbish, hoping this would buy her more time to hire a new fixer. But before she could make it any further in her plans, Adam and the authorities intervened. Following her arrest, Jade was calm, collected and compliant with the authorities as they searched Tom's home, and eventually her own. With millions in the bank, she could afford the best lawyers money could buy, and even afford her own bail, which was set at $1 million. Which, I guess thinking about it, is a small price to pay when you know you're destined to lose. But there were several conditions with her bail. To begin with, she had to move back in with her mother, and she could not go more than seven miles away from her home. To add to this, she had to wear a GPS tracker at all times. Either way, Jade's trial officially began on December 21st, 2022, meaning she had two years of freedom before even facing a judge or jury. Throughout court proceedings, Jade's defence claimed that she was innocent. 
They claimed that all the evidence used against her was circumstantial, and that the text messages she had sent were taken out of context and could have been interpreted in many different ways. The prosecution, on the other hand, argued that Jade drugged Tom before suffocating him with a plastic bag. Toxicology reports ultimately concluded that the cause of his death was an overdose of Zolpidem, which is better known as the powerful sleeping pill Ambien. And Jade's defense focused on this. They presented the information as evidence that Tom had died from a self-inflicted overdose and not murder. And since he was known to struggle with alcohol and medication abuse, this wouldn't seem like such an implausible explanation. To add to the evidence presented at her trial, a range of suspicious items were found inside Jade's car, which included red rope, pillowcases, three hand towels tied together to create a rope, and a receipt for these items. This receipt was from Dixieland, which is a hardware supply store mentioned in the text messages sent to her fixer. During questioning, Jade tearfully took to the stand, and amongst the various things said, she described her feelings after she had found her images on his computer. When I went to clean, um... In his office area, I was kind of wiping things down, and um, I bumped the mouse on his desktop computer, and it, it shook the screen awake. And I looked, and there's a picture of female breasts on the screen. And I look, and, um, I have a beauty mark kind of on my chest, and I look, and I go, those, those are my breasts. So it was the most violating just awful, gut-wrenching feeling ever. I felt, I felt sick, I, I felt, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, like, I couldn't even touch my own skin. Um, I don't even know if there's words. I mean, not even in a movie have I seen something so just sick. Had you ever made any uh, sexual overtures toward your stepfather? No, no. Did you tell him that you had uh, nude photos of yourself? No. And you never showed him anything similar to those, correct? No, he was my dad. You would agree with me that the phrase, I just dosed the hell out of him, implies that you gave Tom a whole lot of drugs. It does sound like that. I sent these messages not knowing that all this was going to happen, it was going to get rid. It was more just like, I'm getting frustrated, I could club him on the head. It wasn't, like, actually club him on the head. But Jade's words would ultimately betray her, as they clearly solidified a motive for murder. Prosecutor Jorge del Portillo replied by saying, The motive is in the images she found. The means were all the items found inside her car. The opportunity was that she was the one who picked him up. And the confession is in her text message, I just dosed the hell out of him. With the evidence found inside her car, eyewitness testimonies from Adam and her fixer, and the glaring text messages left behind, Jade's jury were able to come to a verdict after just one day of deliberation. Superior Kate, Court of the State of California, for the County of San Diego, the people of the State of California plaintiff versus Jade Sasha Jenks, defendant. Case number SCN. 420-772. Verdict, count one, first degree murder. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, find the defendant, J. Sasha Jenks, guilty of the crime of murder in violation of penal code section 187, subsection A, a felony, as charged in count one of the amended information, and fix the degree thereof as murder in the first degree. Dated today's date, sign the four person. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, was this and is this your verdict is read? Yes, yes. Yes. All right, does either side wish to have the jury hold? No, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, if you please pull the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please answer with a yes or no answer only as to count one, first degree murder, was this and is this your verdict is read? As you can probably tell, Jade seemed genuinely shocked by the verdict. I guess she was expecting a lawyer to miraculously save her. But even the creme de la creme has its limits. Now, although Jade was found guilty, we have yet to hear how long her sentence will be, which is scheduled for spring 2023. In the state of California, punishment for murder in the first degree is a minimum of 25 years, meaning Jade will remain behind bars until 2048 at the very earliest. Her defense will certainly be looking for the shortest sentence possible, and will likely focus on her emotions and feelings to rationalize her actions.
Now, it's obvious that Tom was not innocent throughout this ordeal, and at the end of the day, he callously collected porn of his very own stepdaughter. And with some of these images dating back to when Jade was only 16 years old, yeah, this guy has some very disgusting tendencies. It is hard to imagine how violated Jade must have felt. This man was a father figure to her, and for him to objectify her for his own twisted sexual fantasies, it's just downright horrendous. Nevertheless, Jade's reactionary actions are extremely hard to justify. She would have been right to report him to the police and bring shame to his name, but instead, she brought shame to her own. There were many things that Tom was doing wrong in the final years of his life. Now, abusing alcohol and prescription medication was one of them, and indecent imagery of his stepdaughter was a whole other kettle of fish. But most of his family remember him in a fonder light. Although all of those around him were beyond disappointed from his actions, they were all genuinely shocked and saddened when they heard about his death. It just goes to show, doesn't it, that no matter how people present themselves, whether they seem kind, well-mannered, or successful, you never know what demons they hide. So I think I'm gonna wrap this one up here, folks. Thank you so much for being here for another video today by Coffeehouse Crime. If you found this case interesting or insightful, then please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet. So what do you think about this case? Personally speaking, I don't think I can justify Jade's actions. But of course, she had every right to be pissed with Tom. What do you think she should have done? Should she have gone to the police, told family and friends, or something different? Whatever it may be, please leave your opinion in the comment section down below. It does create great discussion for us to talk about. Now, as always, I'll be back again very soon with another video. But until that moment arrives, please remember to look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.